The Giants are riding high. A four game win streak. A sweep on the road. Lighting up the scoreboard. Playing the best they have all season. Now they look to keep things rolling at home and close out the first half of the season on a strong note. Giants take on the Cardinals. Game one of the series next. The Giants return home for this weekend of baseball. It is game one of this three game series. Cardinals, Giants, welcome to NBC Sports Bay Area and it's powered by Xfinity. Hi again everybody, I'm Dwayne Kuyper, alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, all of us, players, coaches, manager, broadcasters had so much fun in San Diego. We're just hoping that we can have that much fun here this weekend. Well, you go back the last four games, 40 runs scored, 53 hits. The offense has come to life, and, and really this is something the Giants have been waiting for since the very first day of the season. Tonight, the benefactor, and we call anybody who takes a pitch right now or, and throws a pitch and takes a start, the benefactor of all this good offense, well, it's Drew Pomeranz, and he's been very, very good, especially here in this ballpark. So if ever the two should meet, well, you take on the Cardinals. Paul Goldschmidt, well, he's in a Cardinal uniform. He loves this ballpark. We'll see what happens tonight. All right, stay tuned. We'll take you to our NBC Bay Area studios for an update, and we'll do that right after this. Baseball on NBC Bay Area is brought to you by Toyota, a fast, powerful lineup that will make sure you're safe at home. See your local Toyota dealer today. Toyota. Let's go places. By Southwest Airlines. Low fares, nothing to hide. That's transparency. By Heffernan Insurance Brokers. Insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit hefins.com. And by Jack in the Box. Try Jack's 499 barbecue bacon double cheeseburger combo. Only at participating Jack in the Box restaurants. Your San Francisco Giants are back in the Bay. We've got a gorgeous night for baseball. And after an epic series versus the Padres, the Giants welcome in the St. Louis Cardinals for a three-game series. Welcome back to our broadcast, everybody. I'm Amy Gutierrez. The Giants offense on fire. 40 runs in four games. Evan Longoria responsible for 10 of those. And his series versus the Padres, it's worth another look. Not only did Longo go long ball in all three games, he homered twice in game two. I spoke with him. He said he did tinker with his approach. He widened up, created more rhythm with his swing, and he synced up his hands and his feet. So what does all that mean? Well, it means he's feeling very comfortable at the plate, and the goal is to repeat it over and over. He also added that he really feels the team's starting to gel over the past month. There haven't been nearly as many moving parts and Evan said everyone in that clubhouse feels that they have a shot at the playoffs. All right, if you are a Giants fan, you love Bye Bye Baby. Maybe we'll hear it again tonight. Drew Pomerantz on the Hill. Lineups, first pitch. Kruk and Kipe, it's all coming your way. Stay with us, everybody. Now back here at Oracle Park as we get ready for the Cardinals and the Giants. Uh, the umpires came out a little late so consequently we're waiting for Drew Pomeranz to wait for the umpires and uh, Bam Bam Mullins and uh, Mike Schilt the manager of the Cardinals to break things up so the Giants can actually take the field. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Hey, it's a great time to get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is open daily. 61 degrees. Nice to be back home. You see the winds at 15 miles per hour, humidity at 75%, and it is mostly clear. So now we're waiting on Pomeranz, who's probably saying, hey, if they made me wait, I'm going to make them wait. And on it goes. Oh, here he comes. So Pomeranz. See the hats are a little different. The 4th of July hats. Let's take a look at the Cardinals lineup and it's brought to you by Southwest Airlines. It'll be Edmund to lead things off followed by Martinez and then Paul DeYoung. Goldschmidt. That's right Paul Goldschmidt in a 
Cardinal uniform. It's going to look odd. And uh, he's got big numbers against Drew Pomeranz. O'Neill Fowler and Weeders. Colton Wong is going to hit eighth. And Dakota Hudson is going to pitch ninth or hit ninth. On the hill tonight for the Giants will be the left hander, Drew Pomeranz. Pomeranz, a big guy, 6'5, 240. He's 30 years of age, and he's in his seventh year at the big league level. This is what he's done in 15 starts, 2 and 8 with a 6.25 ERA. But that doesn't tell you the whole story. He's allowed two runs or less in four of his last five starts. He has corrected his mechanical problem. And when he's right, you're going to see a fastball that is going to be an average right around 93 miles per hour with a natural cut. He likes to establish in, especially on the right side of the plate. He will pitch up to finish hitters. He's also got a curveball and changeup. Lifetime against the Cardinals. He's been in three games against them, had one start. He has no record, but with a 3.86 ERA. And what do you say we take a look at the Giants defense? It's brought to you by Geico, starting in their outfield from left to right. Going to be a little creative tonight. Brandon Bell goes out to left field. He's joined by Pilar and Dickerson, best arm in right field, or in center field, rather. Crawford back in the lineup, joined by Longoria on the left side of the infield. Panic and Sandoval on the right side. And Buster Posey, he'll be in the squad, putting down the sides. The Cardinals are coming in from Seattle where they won the last two ball games in Seattle. They lost the first game of that series and the first pitch of the game is a call strike. So we can start a minute late. So Edmund hitting right at 300. And for Edmund. He's 12 for 40. Product out of Stanford. Up and in 2 and 0. Oh. Jose Martinez and then Paul DeYoung. We see some. Some flash out of Evan Longoria. Hey, you didn't, they didn't get to wear him yesterday. They did not, so they're all showing up tonight. Get out to left for the gold glover, Brandon Belt. And Belt puts it away. <laughs> yeah, we laugh about that, but he has no inhibitions whatsoever going from first base to the outfield. And, and that. In our mind, makes him a gold glover. Well, he's already said it. He said he will be a guy that someday will win two, one in left and one in first. <laughs> in the same year. <laughs> Here's Jose Martinez. Martinez hitting 288, seven home runs, 30 runs batted in. He's been a guy that has been linked to the Giants during the offseason. He's a tall hitter. 6 7. And according to the Cardinals, he's the tallest position player they've ever had in their franchise history. He can hit. He can hit. And gone. He can hit. Yep, that proves it. Hey, if long arm guys get the sweet spot, the ball's going to go a long way. It's well, called leverage. The old saying is, is you don't pitch a tall guy down, you pitch him up. And that's exactly what he got. He got down and in just above the knee, and that for Martinez is on a tee. So here's DeYoung. And this is no cheap either. This gets about two thirds of the way up the bleachers. Yeah, a little over half, maybe. Still, that's a big poke. The young hitting 256. And he takes a strike. Home plate umpire is Alfonso Marquez, and it's Everett, Ortiz, and Barrett. And Marquez doesn't have a big zone. I mean, he's small zone, and basically you got to throw between the catcher's knees to get a strike. Tap foul off his foot. It's 0 and 2. But if you let him know you are a strike thrower, you will get a little bit of width on both sides of the plate. Little bit. But you got to earn it.
in the dirt blocked by Buster Posey. The guy on deck is one of four of these Cardinals that have some history against Pomeranz. And that's Goldschmidt. Here's a line drive into center field and that's a base hit. So fly ball home run single and here's Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt hitting 250 with four, 14 home runs. He's got 31 runs batted in. Well, we're a little surprised to see the RBI total. That's low and no stolen bases. Center field. And gone. He loves to play against the Giants. That's home run number 15. And there was little doubt on Martinez's and also little doubt on that one. What he has done to the Giants and what he has done in this ballpark is just remarkable. And I don't care how cold he is. We've seen him come in here and early May hitting 170 and just light it up. And that's a big potato. So Pomeran spikes that one. It's one ball and no strikes. He's got that look that says I love this place. There's a swing and a foul on a curveball. It's one ball and one strike. Well, this is a pretty good pitch to hit. Well, I mean, it's right out there, out of the middle of play at the belt. Kind of what where you, you'd ask for it, right? If you were going to ask for it, that's where he would ask for it. But look, you're a, a pitcher. The first inning is where you are susceptible to that because you don't have your command yet. You got you're a little geeked up. You're trying to settle in. And that's when you make lo location mistakes. Twelve home runs here in this part. Yeah, he's thinking. I can't believe I ever left this division. What am I thinking? There's a strike. It's three and two. Well, you know what? The way the Giants' offense has been, this ought to be a good game. <sighs> Not worried about it. <laughs> He's worried about getting the Cardinals off the or uh, onto the field. Is that's a walk? All right, let's take a look at the numbers for the Martinez home run. It's a big one. 108 miles per hour, 433 feet. That's our Statcast AI powered by AWS. Here's Fowler hitting 247. He's got nine home runs. And he takes down low. One ball and no strikes. One for five lifetime against Pomeranz. Last time Pomeranz faced the Cardinals was in 2013. If you look at the stolen base numbers for the Cardinals, basically they don't run much. And a strike to even the count. Matt Carpenter, who's injured. And Edmund have the most with six. Actually, that's not true. Ozuna had eight. There's Sandoval to Crawford. And Pomeranz is not going to be able to get there in time. So that'll be a fielder's choice. 
three six. Stay connected to the Giants with all the speed coverage and control you need with Xfinity X Fi. This is way beyond Wi Fi. This is X Fi. So here's Matt Weeders. Weeders hitting 225. No Yadier Molina tonight, or at least in the starting lineup. Foul back in its 0 1. Well, that was a good pitch to hit. This is right where you like a middle end, just between the knee and the belt. And Weeders had a healthy rip on that one. He's got power. So one ball and one strike. Close two and one. Cardinals on the road are five games under 500. They're 19 and 24. Swing and a miss. Two and two. 93 mile an hour fastball. They set that target on the inside corner. It winds up going on the outside corner, so it winds up being a good mistake. But Weeder's a big, tall fella. He likes that ball middle away. You don't want to make a habit of missing middle away, especially between the knee and the belt. You would think this would be a running situation with Dexter Fowler. Who's got four steals? But Fowler's showing no signs of going. This is to right, headed into the corner, and it's going to be out of play. Dickerson usually in left, but tonight he's in right. I think this is a case where Bruce Bochy hadn't had Sandoval in the lineup in the starting lineup in none of the games in San Diego and he wants to keep Sandoval fresh. On the ground past Sandoval right off the end of his glove. Fowler puts on the brakes. And uh, they almost got Fowler. So Colton Wong's going to hit. So four hits in the inning. Pomeran wants a new baseball. Wong has faced Pomeranz just once in his lifetime. He's 0 for 1. Yeah, he is going to sit on a fastball and he is going to look to do damage. He's got a little pop in his bat. Seven home runs on the year. Just trying to figure out where was that ball coming out of Pomeran's hand. Out of play. It's nothing in two. Backed it up. Fastball, fastball. So he has got him set up for a two strike surprise with the breaking ball here. You miss, miss down.
Look out. Near Rusty, who many people believe he's the most valuable cameraman we have. Well, he does. Well, yeah, and we that's asked, all that matters. We asked him, and that's the answer we got. All right, let's take a look at the camera for Mike Phillips. Heads up, Rusty. No swing. One and two. Lance Barrett, third base up bar, saying no swing. Cardinals have not done well hitting with runners in score position. That has been one of their Achilles heel. Longoria will move over and it'll be out of play. Here's Goldsmith's numbers. Yeah, just a mere 110 mile an hour bolt to center field going 449. One and two. Two and two. I mean, he's throwing one cut or the rest fastballs. He has not thrown a breaking ball. Next pitch will be number 33. This inning starting to get lengthy pitch count wise. But if you're going to have a long inning, I mean, you're, you're probably best physically equipped to do it in the first. Pilar with room and that'll end the inning. Giants are coming up. Bell Posey Sandoval. It's 3 nothing Cardinals. This copyrighted teller is entered by the authority of the San Francisco Giants and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Francisco Giants Baseball Club, LLC. Giants are coming up. It's 3 nothing Cardinals. Here's the Giants lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. It'll be Belt. But a nice series in San Diego. Then Posey Sandoval and Dickerson. Longoria, he had the great series in San Diego. Crawford, Pilar, and Panic, and then Pomeranz is going to hit ninth. On Hill tonight for the St. Louis Cardinals will be the right-handed rookie, Dakota Hudson. Hudson, a big guy, 6'5", 215. He's 24 years of age. Out of Mississippi State, this is what he has done. 16 starts, he's 6 and 4 with a 3 4 0 ERA. In the last four starts, he whittled his ERA down from the sixes into the threes. Averaging about six strikeouts an inning, but what he does average is a lot of ground balls, the highest ground ball ratio in the National League. And it is a fastball that you'll see between low and mid 90s with velocity. This is the slider change up with the curveball. Slider being his. his Best specialty pitch if you were to ask him. He's faced the Giants a couple times out of the bullpen, but he's this will be his first start. Actually, he's faced them once. So his first start ever against the Giants and here in San Francisco. Here's Belt. And Belt looks at a strike. Belt 242, 10 home runs, 33 runs batted in. One ball and one strike. Mr. Posey to follow and then Pablo Sandoval. Giants are 18 and 25 at home, so including this one, three more at home before the break. Takes high. It's three and one. Can he get a whole lot of belt high location help from Alfonso Marquez? 
that to you prove to him you can throw strikes, especially if you're a rookie. Belt bunts it foul, so it's three and two. Let's take a look at the Cardinal defense starting their outfield from left to right. It'll be O'Neill, Fowler, and Martinez. DeYoung and Edmund there on the left side. Wong and Goldsmith on the right side. Matt Wieters, he's in the squad, putting down the sides. Cardinals last year had the worst defense in the National League. This year they're ranked second. So Belt is going to reach by way of the walk. And here's Buster Posey. Giants are red hot offensively. 40 runs, 53 hits their last four games. And that doesn't tell you the whole story because it's not just three or four guys, it's all of them. Maybe. A little inside, but called the strike, and it's 0 and 1. Sandoval to follow. Buster hitting 250. I don't know. I'm looking at Belt when he takes his lead, and with those shoes, he looks faster. Yeah, he does. He also looks like he's skiing. Yeah, he doesn't have to. He could get a bigger lead and just get back with one foot and he's <laughs> back on the bag. He does nothing to hide him either. He's proud of his size 15s. One and two. Good sink and fastball there. That's one where you're glad you didn't hit it. Well, if you hit it, you're probably going to whack it into your ankle or your toe. Posey has done his last five games. Look out, two and two. So Belt opens up the bottom of the first with a walk. It's two and two to Buster Posey. Three and two. And the one thing you don't ever want to do, when you know a lineup is hot, you do not want to start issuing walks. Because a hot lineup takes advantage of gifts. They take advantage of mistakes. Belt with those 15 goes. Swinging a line drive base hit. Belt is going to put on the brakes. All right, time now for our stats with lows. The National League runs per game leader since June 20th. Well, the Pirates are averaging 6.23 runs a game. The Giants, 6.07. That's right, they are even scoring more than the Dodgers. And that's our stats with lows. Here's Sandoval. Sandoval hitting 287 with 10 home runs, 30 runs batted in. With Alex Dickerson to follow. Not close. One ball and no strikes. So Pomeranz vulnerable in the first. Giants are trying to see if they can do the same to Hudson. Well, they're trying to get this crowd in the game too. The Giants fans know that this offense has been hot. They enjoyed watching their series against the Padres on TV. And they want to see it hot here at Oracle Park. Out of play.
Yeah, yeah. this guy's feeling it. Yeah, he is. Hey, look who got the ball. He's going to throw it. Wow, is she cute, huh? One ball and one strike to Sandoval. Belt at second. Posey at first. I think Posey just said something to Goldsmith. I think I read his lips. You will not see another ball you can hit the entire series. <laughs> well, there are teammates of the of the WBC team that won it, and uh, they got to be good friends. It's impossible not to like Paul Goldsmith. Yeah, it is. Two and two. Time you see a sinker baller like Dakota Hudson, you always think it's going to be a good matchup for Pablo Sandoval, who's a good low ball hitter, especially from the left side. Three and two. Not much speed of the base pass. I would be surprised if the runner started here. And I know Bruce Bochy with a sinker bar likes to do that at times, but you just don't have any speed with Belt and Posey on the bat paths. The 3 2. Tapped. Foul. Sandoval. Waiting on this 3 2 pitch from Dakota Hudson. And he walked him. It took every ounce of strength for Sandoval not to swing at that 3 2 pitch. Uh, that's a good point. That wasn't easy for him. And now a quick word from Toyota. It's the final days of Toyota's 4th of July sales event. Time is running out. Just announced. Lease a RAV4 for just $259 a month or a RAV4 hybrid for $289 a month. Hurry in now. Event ends Monday. Toyota. Let's go places. So Mike Maddox is out to have a word. Well, the message probably was, hey, throw a sinker. Yeah. And here's Dickerson. Dickerson hitting 281. Three home runs, 15 driven in. And he takes a breaking ball for a strike. And that was the message. The throw message. a slider, throw another pitch away from your sinker. And very quickly jumps on top 0 1 with that breaking ball. Hit out to left. It's O'Neill. Belt is tagging. And he's going to bluff. He better get back. He does. Cardinals may look at this one. So he just gets back, at least we think. Throws it and gets cut off. Yeah, he got back. Heart attack, though, if you're Ron Wotus. He used every bit of those size 15s to get back in safely. It's 
So here's Longoria. Yeah, I mean, you want to get a good throw out of, of your left fielder, so you have to bluff. I mean, you got to you got to go hard. And that's outside for a ball. Here's the numbers on Longoria's road trip. Pretty impressive. Seven for 13. Four home runs, nine RBIs. On the ground foul. When he showed up in San Diego, he's hitting 222. He also scored seven runs, so. He accounted for 16 runs in that series by either driving them in or, or scoring them himself. Out of play, one and two. The big out for Hudson is getting Dickerson out. Left handed hitter power because now if he goes to his best pitch the sinker he can get out of this inning with one pitch well, right now he doesn't have the knee high command with that sink he's making some mistakes up he just got away with one and Longoria goes around so he goes with the breaking ball bounces it on home plate and what a time to get your first strike out of the night. Well, not out of the woods yet. Here's Crawford. Take a look. He has some count leverage, and all he's trying to do is bounce it on home plate. Nice block there by Weeters, the catcher. And he did go. Crawford hitting 222 with five home runs. 27 runs batted in. Balls in one strike. So he comes right at him with a fastball. That's the beauty of a sinker. I mean, you could get brave with a good sinker because you know, in most instances, it's going to get hit on the ground. Look at Hudson's numbers with the bases loaded. I mean, he's only given up one hit. That was a grand slam to Bryce Harper. Ball back going to. Belt, Posey, and Sandoval aboard. Since May 18th, Hudson ranks third in ERA with 2.33. It's nationally. Out of play. Twenty eight pitches, so both pitchers throwing more than they want to throw in the first, but Hudson's got a chance to get out of this mess. One and two. Next pitch, number 30. And that's kind of a rarity where you see both starters open up the game and have 30 or more pitches a person in the first inning. Crawford got one right at the belt and he follows it back. 
What advantage the Giants have coming into the series that they had the off day yesterday. And with the break Monday, I mean, they really could use their bullpen. The Cardinals yesterday were in San Seattle, so they didn't have the luxury of a day off coming into the series. Two and two, and a good block good by pitch. Leaders. Good pitch, good take. Back foot slider, and it's the first time that Crawford had seen that pitch. Huh, three and two. All around the strike zone. This will be pitch number 33, and Hudson thinking about it. Got to get lucky, right? Throw it down the middle. Got a challenge. And he walked him. That was a nice at bat, by the way. Well, you think back, I mean, he was down the count early, and that one two slider that he was able to lay off of, one of the best takes in that sequence. So, really, a rally for free, and that's a significant run. And they also get another hot hitter stepping in that box, and he loves the first pitch, especially if it's a fastball. Pilar had a good series in San Diego. And he hits this one on the ground and the base hit. One run scores. Sandoval will drop anchor. It's three to two. Well, that's the hit that got this crowd into it. I mean, it, it woke him up. First pitch hit, and he gets a breaking ball. Cardinals stay away from the fastball tendency, and he still finds a way to get it through the. The infield that ball came up on uh, Tommy Edmund. I mean, that was a, that was a, a big break for the Giants. That ball doesn't come up. He makes that play. So here's Panic. Panic can make that really hurt. And he takes a strike, and it's 0 and 1. Panic has faced Hudson before, just once. He's one for one. And you see your base runners. Nothing in the middle of the plate so far for Panic. So now he's got to cover. Well, he got low and away, then he got high and tight. That's a pretty nasty two pitch sequence. On the ground. And the long throw is in time, and that'll end the inning. We got a ball game. It's 3 2 Cardinals. We'll be back. Giant Ball on NBC Sports Bay Area is brought to you by Kelly Moore Paints. Go where the pros go. Kelly Moore, the Painters Paint Store. It's a 3 2 ball game, so the Giants come back. And it'll be Dakota Hudson who's going to hit first. Actually, both teams sent eight men to the plate. Yeah, it's the second inning already. Let's see what Hudson has done. One for 25 with 14 strikeouts. 
So he's probably going to be in the take one strike mode. I would imagine. Those type of numbers. Would justify it. And there's your take one strike. And another strike. I mean, you're not so good hitters. They're going to take a strike. And then, you, then you're bad hitters. Sometimes they'll take two strikes. One for 24. 14 strikeouts. Look out. That's where if you're on the on deck circle, you better be ready. And that's Tommy Edmond who clearly was ready. Got him. All right, Amy G's here. Amy, what's up? All right, gentlemen, the Giants playing their best baseball of the season. You talked about that offense. 40 runs in four games. The last time that happened, August 29th through September 1st, 2014, five years. And the guys, they are digging it. Evan Longoria said simply, winning is just a lot more fun. Alex Dickerson added, we've got a lot of guys with an unbelievable track record over the years. You know they're going to get hot here in the second half. You can see it start to click, and it's really fun to be in the middle of that and it is really fun to watch gentlemen yeah we enjoyed ourselves in San Diego we always do but not so much since this so Santiago Casilla balk off that was when we started not to have fun yeah that was that was a not fun night the balk off Now the good news is that Pomeranz is missing below the strike zone with the curveball. The bad news is he's not been able to elevate it early in the count to get a strike with it. A lot of play, two and two. The bottom line is it's better to to miss below the strike zone. Not many guys are going to help you out with a, a hang and break a ball above the strike zone. They may hit it out of the ballpark, but they're not going to help you out swinging this. If you throw it below the strike zone, that curveball could get swung at. Oh, good pitch. Hmm. Cutter, that's it really swept across the plate. I think that pitch surprised Alfonso Marquez. But remember the comment we made earlier. You don't get much if it's not caught between the catcher's knees. Out of play. Forty four pitches for Pomerantz and really it's kind of what he is. I mean he throws a lot of pitches. He'll hit the hundred pitch level sooner than any other giant starter. Look out. Club level to our right. Heads up. Got a man making a play. Looking for a kid. Found one. Job well done. Not close. Tonight's Giants game is brought to you by the California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways reminding you to always wear your life jacket and get home safe. Here's Martinez who hit a home run. In the first inning. Edmund with a couple of seals.
Good pitch. And it's 0 and 1. That's one of the best breaking balls he's throwing. Outside. One ball and one strike. We said it was a long one. You're going to get a chance to look at it. Definitely had the right sound. Yeah, that definitely had the right sound. And it'll make your head shake. Right now, looking for a ground ball. Side two and one. Yeah, this becomes a big pitch. I mean, Pomeranz trying to have a shutdown inning. His offense brought momentum back into his dugout. He needs to get them back in there. The guy in the batter's box already taking him deep, and right now he's nibbling with that fastball. But he needs the challenge here. Crawford in between her to panic to Sandoval. And that's what he was pitching for. Pomeranz, Belt Posey coming up. No better place to take in the view than at your Bay Area Mercedes Benz dealers. It's a 3 2 ball game. As Pomeranz going to lead things off. I know you're wondering how Pomeranz has done this year swinging the bat. I'm not going to tell you. He's due. He's absolutely due. He's doodly due. Belt on deck. And a call strike. Two. First breaking ball that Pomeranz has ever seen. <laughs> well, he has a better chance on fastball, I, I admit. Maybe change ups. Maybe change ups? Well, the Giants celebrate this weekend. Special luxury suite special Sunday brunch at the ballpark. Tickets as low as 1776 using coupon code July 4. Visit sfgiants.com slash July 4. Here's Belt. Belt takes low. He just. Uh, Third base umpire Lance Barrett called out a strike. I don't know. I didn't see the hand sign. But I think he did. Lance. Oh, what are you doing, Lance? And that pitch is high. All right, let's take a look. Did he go? No, he did not. He had a perfect night going until then. Belt drives when center field. Fowler back, still backpedaling, and now he'll reach up and make the catch. Two outs. And that'll bring up Buster Posey. Buster with a base hit. He lined it into left field. 
in the first inning. And he looks at a strike. And a base hit to right field. So I suppose he's two for two. And that'll get Sandoval to the plate. He just kind of served that like it was a tennis match. Take a look. Yep, just kind of a half swing, dropping some head on it. You get those when you got balance. And that's something he found about a, a week ago. Send the ball with a rip and he swings and misses. Two outs and Posey at first. Giants have been really good at laying off that heavy sinker down below the strike zone. Nice at bat in the first inning where he drew a walk. Got him on a pitch down and in, and that's going to end the inning. De Young, Goldschmidt, O'Neill coming up. All right, here's our Coors Banquet timeless moment. It happened July 5th, 1987 at Wrigley Field. Kevin Mitchell hit two home runs in his first game with the Giants, a pair of two run homers off of Les Lancaster of the Cubs. Giants won 7 5. Gone. And then again. Didn't even have a name on his uni. On. Yeah, this seems like. Three days ago that that happened. He was fun to watch. Here's DeYoung. DeYoung with a base hit in the first inning as he takes a pitch inside. There's a high strike. Who do you think? One ball and one strike. Who do you think Paul DeYoung's rooting for on Sunday? Soccer game between the U.S. and the Netherlands. It depends upon where he was born. Now, maybe his grandparents. Yes. Keeping an eye on the Netherlands. Yes. It's tomorrow, right? Sunday. Sunday, eight o'clock in the morning. Wow. I've been watching. It's been exciting. Wish our ladies good luck. Three and two. Smith to follow. And that was a strike. No help. Tight zone. Well, the My Teams apps is your source for live stream Giants games on NBC Sports Bay Area. There's a great article today on Giants number one pick, Hunter Bishop, plus all the news and notes on the Giants highlights, interviews, articles, podcasts. Oh, yeah, and Alex Pavlovich, too. It's all in the My Teams app, so check it out. Here's Goldschmidt. 
Goldschmidt a long home run in the first. Now let's take a look at the 3 2 fastball challenge here. Right at the base of the strike zone and. Uh, he didn't get it. And that rattled Pomerantz. You're struggling you're looking for all the help you can get when you make a pitch and you don't get it it's. Especially tough to take. Now you got to come in. You know, every time I had a strike, a tight strike zone from an umpire, I always thought the same thing. I always thought that that umpire never was a pitcher. And Marquez is tight. There's a strike. It's two and one. And if you look at him, he's built like a second baseman, infielder. Two, 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 one pitch. Here it is. And it's three and one. 60 pitches. With the off day yesterday and the break coming on Monday, Bruce Pochi will definitely get into that bullpen early. Keep an eye on DeYoung. He does not go and it's ball four. That close. And that's it. The bullpen's going to start going. And it's going to be a red alert for Dutch Holland. <laughs> red alert meaning. Get ready and get ready quickly. Meanwhile. Kurt Young going to take the. Long walk out. It's Kind of kill time. Try and find a little focus for Drew Pomeranz. You can tell he's frustrated not getting that 3 2 strike with the young. Look, if, if. If he was having a problem. Wanting to throw a strike to Goldschmidt, then I don't have any problem him walking him. When startups need money, they go to Sand Hill Road in Silicon Valley. That's the inspiration behind NBC Bay Area's podcast, Sand Hill Road, hosted by Scott McGrew. Subscribe now, new episodes available. Here's O'Neill, who drew a walk in the first inning. Up the middle. Crawford to panic. Not in time. So O'Neill not wasting any time. There's Fowler's coming up. Yeah, O'Neill runs Paul runs pretty well. And there was not much chance of getting a double play once the angle got weird for Crawford and he had to kind of shovel an off balance little flip to panic. You're going to get O'Neill, I and mean, it's got to be smooth. So now, first and third with Fowler. And he takes a strike. Still can get out of this with a double play ball. Fowler runs pretty well, so you have to speed things up. Outside and high. Fowler hit a ball to Sandoval in the first inning. One and two. Good curveball there. That's the best one he's thrown. And it broke Fowler down. Watch the swing halfway into it. He's realized that he was overmatched. 
Now you can lower it four inches or bounce it at home plate. Good chance you may go after it again. Easy take. Just has not been sharp. And this is something we haven't seen much of in his last five starts. When he's had to make a pitch, he's been able to make it, and it has not been there for him tonight. He struggled. And the 2 2 pitch. He got him. Beautiful job by Pomeranz, but not out of the woods yet. Yeah, that's what he needed. Runner, it's there. Less than two outs. You need that strikeout. Especially when you have a fast guy up there. I mean, it kind of kind of makes your option for you. Not a likely chance you're going to get a double play, so pitch for the strikeout. And once he established the breaking ball in the mind of Fowler, he just locked him up with a fastball, threw it right through him. So here's Weeders. And Weeders takes high. Weeders with a base hit in the first inning. One ball and one strike. So Pomeranz, this pitch will be number 70. Crawford's going to have to play the short hop. Throws high, send the ball on the bag, and Pomeran works his magic. And Dickerson's going to lead things off. Almost connection to the game, catchers worthy of the Hall of Fame. You see Yadier Molina, the number of games he's played compared to Buster Posey. All star games, gold gloves, titles. It's going to be interesting. And we think they both should go. Yeah, oh, no question. High drive to right. It is out of here. He's done it again, and this game is tied. I'll give him credit. He doesn't waste any time. No. That's a humble man's trot right there. He keeps hitting him like that. It's gonna hard to be hard to be humble. I mean that that's a laser. That is a laser to right. It just never got up high. He hit it hard and loud. Just didn't know if it was gonna be able to stay in the air long enough. Cover that 24 foot wall out in right field. And it got this crowd just buzzing. Yeah, that's 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 how you get a Friday night crowd into it. As Longoria takes a strike. That's just a hanger. How do you hit a sinker ball? You look up, and that is prime country. And he jumps on it. That's a strong man. And it's high to Longoria. From the side, get that foot down. And you know, the thing about him that is so impressive for a guy his size, 6'3, 235. Is how compact the swing is. And that's compact power. Up and in again. Two balls in one strike. I think I worked a long time on that swing. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Crawford on deck. Thank you. 
Probably thinking I'd like to have done that in the first inning. Yeah. Longoria's got a base hit. As he drives it in front of O'Neill. Tough guy to jam right now. Take a look at the stat cast on Alex Dickerson's home run. And that's his hardest hit of the year, almost 113 miles an hour. Impressive. Crawford with a walk, and that happened with the bases loaded. And he takes outside for a ball. Pilar is on deck. And there's a strike to Crawford. Swing in a minute. One and two. One and two. Got him. Four strikeouts. Time now for our Coors Light Cold Hard Fact. Entering our uh, our game tonight, and they'll be uh, RBI leaders by two teammates since June 21st. Well, Kevin Pillar and Alex Dickerson with 27. More than Machado and Hosmer, and more than Swanson and Freeman. And that's our Coors Light Cold Hard Fact. Here's Pilar with Longoria at first, then a call strike. It's a belt high gift right there. Not a, not a problem if you've got some power. You see that in the first pitch, you think you're going to see a, another sinker up. Pilar had a ball just to the left of Edmund. Took a little tricky high hop over Edmund's glove, and it became an RBI single. One and two. Seven walks in this game tonight. Four by Pomerantz, three by Hudson. Thirteenth home run allowed by Hudson. Pilar thinking that that was too close to take fouls. I think that was a wise decision. That was a good pitch. Right now, I mean, he's throwing better location pitches with his slider than he has with his sinker. Back to the strike three pitch to Crawford. That last one there to Pilar, though, I mean, those are good pitches. Pop up. Out of play. That'd be a tough sky. I lost it. 
It is a tough sky. Dusk is just not an easy play if it's a pop up or a high fly ball. One and two. And tight two and two. No sir. So be pitch number sixty six. Three and two. Boy, have we seen some counts have gone oh two, one yeah. two, wind up to three two. I mean, look at it. I mean, is, is it. One out in the third, we played an hour and fifteen minutes. Yeah, I mean, the pace has just been really slow because of the strike zone. But in all honesty. Most of these balls that Alfonso Marquez has been called, they've been balls. I mean, his zone's been tight, but he's not the reason for the slow pace. You got him. Yeah, the slider again. Well, tonight's game is brought to you by Monterey Bay Aquarium. You keep your eye on the, cons on the conservation ball. Skip the plastic straws you don't need. Use a re reusable water bottle. Share the love. Share your voice. Panic rolled out to short to end the first. And he takes a strike. But if you told Joe Panic that the strike zone was tight tonight, <laughs> yeah, he'd disagree. With he would not. He would not even hear what you had to say. Tap slowly to second. Wong played that into a tricky hop, and that's going to end the inning. Well, the Giants tie it up on the Dickerson home run. This is his fourth in a Giants uniform. It's bye bye, baby. It hits Levi Landing, and this game is tied. Fourth inning coming up. Well, dog to the ballpark this Sunday, July 7th. It's the dog days of summer summer presented by Zynga pregame on field parade collapsible dog travel bowl. That's what you're going to get and a ticket to the Giants Cardinals SF Giants dot com slash dog days. Here's Colton Wong in a tie game and there's a call strike. Wong lines it down the left field line and a fair ball. Belt's going to pick it up and it's a leadoff double. Let's check in with Amy G. All right, gentlemen. Well, for people out there that are thinking about becoming giant season ticket holders, here's why you should do it. The benefits are pretty amazing. You get lots and lots of fun stuff to do, including meeting the Giants ambassadors, Jeremy Affelt and Will Clark for social engagement. You also get a ticket trade opportunity, which means you get to exchange up to 20 games for other dates on the schedule. You get Saturday field days that you get to play catch on the field and you get early access for VP. Here's my favorite one, guys. You get 20 per off concessions and retail. I'm in. Go to sfgiants.com for more information. Dwayne? All right. Here's Hudson. Hudson shows bunt and he bunts it foul. That's not a bad place to, to pitch a guy if he's showing bunt because inevitably you're going to use your bat to try to protect you and then get out of the way. And that one you can pop up. And the bunt. And it's a good one. 
So Wong now at third. That's Hudson's fifth sacrifice of the year, so he has not been effective swinging the bat, but he has been a good bunter, and that was a job well done. So Pomeranz right back into another strikeout situation. Giants are going to play the infield back, at least Crawford and Panic. Longoria now is a couple of steps behind the bag at third. Sandoval, even with the bag at first. And it's low, 1 0. You know, here's where you got to be careful. You're pitching for the strikeout, so you're going to pitch for corners early in the count. But the one thing you can't do is walk a guy, which can expand the inning. It's the call on the inside corner. It's a ball and a strike. Pitch That's one and two. Nice two pitch sequence at that first strike inside corner with the fastball. Got the second strike in the outside corner again with the fastball. Trevor got heading down to start getting heated up. Josh got a piece to stay alive. On deck is Martinez. Driven to right. This might be more than a sacrifice fly. Way out into Triples Alley. And Edmund can fly. He is going to stop at third with a triple. And it's four to three. Set up an outside target. And this just laid right out at the belt, out over the plate. It only works when you have the guy in the batter's box go with the location. And that's a really nice at bat for Medman to take advantage of the right center field gap on that high fastball up and away. Especially to do it in a two strike count. And that Giants caught a break. They're telling us that's a home run in 27 ballparks. I'd like to know where the other two are. So now the Giants have pulled the infield in. Martinez is homered and he's bounced into a double play. Here he takes inside, 1 and 0. Well, we know it did go out of this ballpark. That's one of my favorite stats on here, by the way. You find out how a fly ball does in other ballparks. Foul. Another hanger. Get that ball down. Right about now, they're telling Trevor God, take it seriously. This may be his last hitter. One and two. Okay. 
the other two ballparks that the ball was not a home run in is Kansas City and the Chicago White Sox. One and two. Two and two. Eighty three pitches or one out here in the fourth. Ideally you want to be forty five or less. Going into the inning sixty or less after the fourth is over. Two two pitch here it is. Got him. Job well done gets the strike out he was pitching for. So he gets to see another hitter. Just a good solid fastball at 94. And Martinez was either looking middle in with the fastball or breaking ball because he was off balance there. The young is singled and he's walked. Strike and it's 0 and 1. Pomeranz is due to lead off the bottom of this inning. This will be his last inning. Pitch count dictates that. A lot of stress throws tonight. Up the middle. The damage is going to be one run. It could have been worse as Pomeranz retires to Young. 4-3 Cardinals. 4-3 Cardinals. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. So here's our Biofreeze relief moment powered by Biofreeze. Fast acting pain relief. Wednesday in San Diego, Will Smith got his 22nd consecutive save of the season. It's a ground ball from Ian Kinsler to Donovan Solano. And then he gets Fernando Tatis striking out. And then Eric Hosmer. He strikes out. The game is over. And that is our Biofreeze relief moment. So moving up the ladder, most career saves by Giants left-handed pitchers since 1969. Rigetti, Lefferts, and Smith now the number two spot, trailing just Gary Lavelle by oh, a bunch. Sticks around, he could get him in a couple years. Yastrzemski takes a pitch inside. He's hitting for Pomeranz. Yastrzemski. Hitting at 246. Two balls and no strikes, then belt, then posy. Center field. Fowler spins around. He reaches up and he makes the catch. That's a nice play. Boy, it really is. I didn't think he had a chance at this. He is a long armed outfielder, and he had every bit of that sleeve length as he reaches to the high backhander. That's just a great, that's a great play. I mean, he extends out as far as he could go and uses every bit of that glove. So that's at least a double, maybe a triple. Denied. So here's Belt. And Belt takes outside. One ball and no strikes. With Buster Posey on deck. Belt fouls it out of play.
Swing and a miss. One and two. Not a lot of swings and misses at the sinker tonight. A lot of swings and misses on the slider. Hudson's breaking ball has really got him out of some jams. Got him. Well, one of the traditions is before the All Star game, you're going to get your All Star jersey. And Will Smith received his. Pretty proud of that, as he should be. He deserved it. Here's Buster, who's two for two. And he looks at a strike. Not only did he make the team, but in all likelihood, he's going to pitch. And that's when it gets really fun. Back to back sliders and a quick 0 2. One and two. Be pitch number 80 coming up. Should Buster reach, it would be the Panda. He's on deck. We're in the bottom of the fourth, the 2 2. Fouled out of play. How about Zach Granke tonight? Not only did he throw seven shutout innings, but he did the impossible. He struck out Nolan Arenado three times. That's impossible. And three at bats. How many hits did he get? Arenado? Granke. I mean, how many hits did he get swinging? Yeah. 0 for 3. 3 and 2 to Buster Posey. Anyway, the D backs are leading 8 to nothing. I saw that score, and as good a hitter as Grinky is, I'm thinking, well, he's got to have a knock or two. And we're always looking for that rarity where a guy throws a shutout and hits a home run. Happened earlier this year. Noah Syndergaard did it. Posey gets one taken away. On the line drive back to Hudson. Well, the movie this Sunday is Top Gun at the ballpark here on July 7th. It's movie day. Your special event ticket, you're going to see a Top Gun themed Buster, Buster Posey bobblehead, Giants Cardinals, and then on field access to the post game showing of Top Gun on the new scoreboard. Also, you can hear Kenny Loggins sing the national anthem, sfgiants.com slash special events. It's a 4-3 lead for the Cardinals, but it's time for a change. Think Speedy, oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune-up and smog experts. Trevor got the new pitcher now for Bruce Bochy. 33rd time that he's coming to a game. 5-0 and with a 3-8-2 ERA. And what's his nickname? The Vulture. The Vulture. 37 strikeouts at 35 and a third. Good stuff. Mid to high 90s gas. Good curveball and a change up. And right out of bed, he gets tested with Paul Goldschmidt. Well, he's really going to be tested now because he's got to throw a strike. And he does. Quick strike. There's Santa. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Two and two. 
Nice two-pitch sequence with a fastball, a 2-0 four-seamer on the outside corner. Then he comes and uses a two-seam grip, and he throws it on the inside corner, and Goldschmidt swung at that like it was a left-handed slider. Out of play. Outside, inside, outside. Comes in on the hands. It's two and two. He's rocking the cradle. Outside, inside, outside, inside, back and forth. You can corner pitch with a good fastball. Life is good. And the payoff. Out of play as Goldschmidt swung at ball four. Yeah, had to cover though. I mean, it was pretty close. In all fastballs. Feel him a breaking ball early in the count, but now that he's meet, needed a pitch to make a pitch, he's been coming at him with gas. Another 3 2, and another foul straight back. So pretty good battle going on right here. And another foul. He's fighting off some fuzz right now. So this will be the 11th pitch. And the 11th pitch was the worst of the bunch. Yeah, God's not going to be happy with that. That was just an easy take. Another one. Fifth free pass. Miraculously, not one walk has come around to score yet for the Cardinals. Yeah, not a real good formula. No. O'Neill takes a pitch inside. He's walked and he's reached on a fielder's choice. An eye on Goldschmidt. He can sneak attack you. There's a strike. O'Neill is kind of the Cardinals' version of Tyler Austin. I mean, he is a strong hitter. Very quick middle in. Foul out of play. Got he in is, on his hands. He is put together. On deck is Fowler. Two and two.
The pitch. Curveball hit on the ground. Foul. Looking at a note here about Tyler O'Neill's dad, Terry. Former Mr. Canada, winning the national bodybuilding title in 1975. <laughs> it's all making sense. This guy was doing push ups eight months out of the crib. It's two and two. On the ground to panic to Crawford on the run, not in time. He was also sprinting. Out of the crib. Out of the crib. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, this is from the right side. He didn't have much of a backswing. I mean, he's just cruising. That's 4 1 speed from the right side. That's moving. Fowler with O'Neill at first base. On the ground in a base hit. And now O'Neill is going to get to third easily. So once again, the Cardinals will have runners at first and third. It's been like that the whole night. There has not been one one two three inning against the Cardinals tonight. Weeders singled in the first bounced out to Crawford in the third. Swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. O'Neill at third. Fowler at first. And Fowler chased back. Great, you look at Stubby Clap, the first base coach next to Fowler. Stubby Clap, five foot eight. Fowler not. Well, you wouldn't expect a guy named Stubby to be six foot five. One ball and one strike. Fowler six five. I don't know. We called him Scoop. Got trying to get the strikeout. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, you figure a guy named Scoop would catch everything. A little activity now in the Cardinals bullpen. It's going to be Giovanni Gallegos. So the 11 pitch walk to Goldsmith started this mess. On the ground and a base hit. Fowler is going to go to third. And Weeders is going to stay at first. And it's 5 3. And we're back to being first and third again. And Mark Melanson head down. He's getting a red alert. Kurt Young going out, trying to calm things down. A lot of base runners tonight. My goodness. It's the second annual Battle of the Bay Art Show, and NBC Sports Sorts and NBC Sports Bay Area is calling on all artists to submit their Giants and A's artwork. It's a 
featuring beautiful works by local artists. Artists open call now through Tuesday, July 9th. NBC Sports Bay Area dot com slash Battle of the Bay Art. That's what you're going to submit it to. Well, and you know what's cool about that? If you are a contributing artist, you are going to have your art seen. A lot of people come through and they see it on a daily basis in both ballparks. Very cool. Here's Colton Wong, who doubled in the fourth. Colton Wong, not a tall hitter. He's 5'7". And a strike. Look at Colton Wong, and, and he does remind you of Joe Morgan in stature in the batter's box. Hall of Fame great Cincinnati Red, former Giant. One ball and one strike. And don't let 5 7 fool you. Colton Wong can hit a ball at any ballpark. And he's got a lot of power. Yes, he does. We've seen him put it in the water here. Tap foul. One and two. Change up. Good one. It's becoming a good pitch for Trevor Gott. Especially the lefties. One two pitch. Here it is. Look out. Into the Giants dugout. That's a slash right there. Just don't hurt Amy G. And there's Ray Black. Yeah, don't let the ugly finder fool you. No. Yeah, you could be walking up that tunnel and unexpectedly catch one in the chops. Here's the one two on the ground to Longoria to panic. Not in time. No chance with long speed. So that'll be an RBI. Just not a lot of backswing either for Wong. He gets out of the box so quickly. Back to a three run lead. Cardinals led three nothing after one half inning and then the Giants worked their way back into a tie. But this time a walk does hurt the Giants. Foul back gets nothing in two. No swing. He didn't go. One and two. It's three straight fastballs from Trevor Gott. Already determined Dakota Hudson not much of a hitter, but so far he's been reluctant to throw that curveball. And he got him with a high strike. Well, the damage is done. Two runs for the Cardinals. It's 6 3. All right, here's the upcoming. 
Giants TV calendar. It's brought to you by Wendy's, the Giants and Cardinals. Tomorrow at six with pregame live at five, and then Sunday at one with pregame live at noon. Then the All Star break, and then the Giants will open up on Friday in Milwaukee on the twelfth on NBC Sports Bay Area. Six three Cardinals, and for the Giants here. In their half of the fifth, it'll be Sandoval, Dickerson, and Longoria. Sandoval has walked and he struck out. On the ground, foul. Yeah, I believe I said the game was going to start at six tomorrow. That's incorrect. Starts at seven. Pre-game live at at six. Here's. Sandoval as he fouls it back one and two. A rare 705 Saturday game. The one two. On the ground. But it's Edmund who has it. And he throws him on. The base hit for a long time. Yeah, not anymore. Dickerson hit a home run in the third. Well, it was impressive. It was the hardest ball he's hit all year, almost 113 miles an hour. One hop, splash. Here he takes down low. One twelve point nine. Two and oh. So Hudson wants another ball. He wants to find a ball that's got a strike in it. I, I, it's been so much fun to watch Dickerson since he's come up. I mean, he captured our imagination early, and his at bats, like after the first day, we're we're looking forward to him. Three and zero. Yeah, it didn't take us long. No, and then he locked it in with his batting practice. And in that one day, here we saw him hit ten balls in a row into into the water. Yeah, we could go tonight. That got our attention. And it, not one over swing in, in any of them. They were just pretty much big fly balls. Line drive, base hit. Bringing Longoria to the plate. And that at bat right there is as impressive as the home run. 3 1. Stays inside the ball, goes opposite gap. Mike Maddox going to come out and talk to Hudson again. Let's take a look at this location pitch. See the ball start on the inside corner, then it kind of drifted out over the middle of the plate with two seam movement. Let's it get deep. Serves it the other way. You see a swing like that, and, and that leads you to believe the guy can hit for average here. We know he has power. But a guy that could hit 275, 280, and knock 30 over the wall, I mean, that, that's a rare animal. But you see that type of a swing right there, and, and it gets hitting coaches excited. And they all say the same thing. That guy can hit for average at this level. Here's Longoria who singled in the third. Mm -hmm. 
Right now trying to move the line along for Crawford and then Pilar. And he doesn't get the call. It's one ball and no strikes. He's got to get through this inning to to earn a decision. And the fifth inning is definitely a different inning than the previous four because of that. You have to throw five to qualify. Run it up a little bit. It's one ball and one strike. Fifth and the ninth. Although guys don't get a chance to pitch the ninth a whole lot anymore. And that's a shame because that's the one that feels the best. On the ground, this could be a pair. That's one and two. And that'll end the inning. Sixth inning coming up. Well, tomorrow night, July 6th, first 20,000 fans will receive a Will Clark baseball t shirt presented by DraftKings. First pitch is set for 7.05 p.m. Tickets are always available, so go to sfgiants.com and check it out. I want to get that, I want to get that, I want to get that. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your trusted oil change tune up and smog experts. Mark Melanson, the new pitcher now for the Giants. Take a look at his numbers. 34th time that he has come into a game. And on the first pitch to Tommy Edmond, Edmond fouls it to our left down below. It's no balls in one strike. Edmond is one for two, hit a triple in the fourth. Shoots this one up the middle, Crawford on the backhand. One out, let's check in with Amy G. All right, gentlemen, we're going to switch gears here for a moment because we recently lost a member of the Giants family. Tyler Beatty lost his stepfather, Andy Rivers, earlier last week after a long battle with cancer. He was married to Tyler's mom for 20 years, and Tyler sent me the following words to share with the fan base this evening and about this amazing man. He said he meant the world to my mom, brother, and me. He was so talented musically and in multiple bands over the course of his life. He impacted so many people and loved his family so much. He was a cool, cool dude. Tyler, our thoughts are with you and yours at this difficult time. Gentlemen. All right. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, we're thinking about Tyler and his family. It snowballs in one strike to Jose Martinez. In the dirt. Giants infield straight up. On the ground to Crawford. And Crawford will make the play. To the ground ball from Melanson. He has one of the best ground ball ratios, right around 61%. It's one of the best in the game. The guy who started the game for the Cardinals tonight, Dakota Hudson, he was number one. Seventy-three percent of balls hit off him go on the ground. But for Melanson, I mean he's always had that ability. Got two ground balls quickly here tonight. Here's DeYoung who takes a strike. On the ground and a base hit as he pokes it past Joe Panic and here's Goldsmith. Goldschmidt homered in the first, and then he's walked twice. He's got good numbers lifetime against Go um, Melanson. Four for 11 with a couple of home runs. So 
with Goldschmidt. I never wonder if he thought about. Yeah, I wish I had a sign with the Giants. <laughs> well, I think the thought had to cross his mind. Of course, he was traded. And then once he got over there, the Cardinals very quickly negotiated an extension. He could be a Cardinal for a long time. Two and zero. Oh. As well as he hits in this ballpark, try telling him this is not a good place to hit. Yeah. Hit a home run straight away center, about 450 feet. Back in the first inning, a two-run shot. This will be a long run for Dickerson, but it's going to be out of play and uncatchable. And it's two balls and one strike. He was in a pretty good place to hit. Arizona, Chase Field, outstanding place to hit. It was tonight for the D backs as they beat the you know, Rockies eight to nothing. See that many shutouts in that ballpark. Good pitch, two and two. Yeah, Zach Rinky did the job on the Rockies. What does it put? He's ten and three now, but an ERA of two point seven three. That's Rinky, an All Star, deservedly. Rockies in Arizona have won the same amount of games, forty four. Arizona's lost two more games than the Rockies. Here's the 2 2 to Goldschmidt. And he flips that ball up high. It's 3 and 2. A rare changeup. San Diego and the Dodgers are playing a really tight game. It's 2 to 2. They also survived another earthquake in Southern California. Right in the same area. And it was a big one. Yeah, the Ridgecrest area out there between Bakersfield and Las Vegas. Three and two. Runner will be on the move and Melanson steps off. Takes his time. He's in no hurry. Runner goes in the pitch. Got him. Giants are coming up. It's Crawford to lead things off. MLB is giving away $250,000 to the winner of the 2019 Team Evil Home Run Derby Bracket Challenge. Pick a perfect bracket and predict the longest home run player in distance for your chance to win the big coin. Sign up now at MLB.com slash bracket. Or by downloading the MLB at bat app today. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your trusted oil change tune up and smog experts. Take a look at the numbers for Gallegos. He's having a great year 57 strikeouts at 38 and two thirds. Crawford hits a high fly ball to right. So Fowler makes the catch. Bader is now in center. So one out. And here's Pilar. And Pilar takes a strike. And that's a slatter. I mean, it is an overhand release. He is way high. The velocity in low to mid 90s, but with that straight down bite and slider, which is a good strikeout pitch for him, an occasional changeup. This is pop to center field for Bader. So four pitches, two outs. And here's panic. I mean, 
I haven't had a chance even to write these guys' names in. And there's two outs. Here's Panic. Panic's 0 for 2. Dutch Holland getting loose. In tight and low. Right now, Panic trying to get on for Tyler Austin, who's on deck, and he hits a high drive deep into right center field, but Fowler is going to get there, and that's going to end the inning. Not in this park. Brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Things did not go well in the first inning for the Giants, at least in the top of the first inning. After one, it was 3 2. But uh, the Cardinals are the run in the fourth, the run in the fifth, and they lead in this one 6 3. As Melanson goes out to work for inning number two for him against O'Neill. And it's low. One ball and no strikes. O'Neill, Fowler, Weeders. Foul back. It's one ball and one strike. Hunter Renfro has just hit a home run for the Padres. So they now lead the Dodgers three to two. Low. Two balls and one strike. I mean, I don't think the Dodgers are sweating too much. No, I don't think so. And coming in, they had a 15 game lead on the Rockies. There's a pitch on the outside corner, two and two. Up the middle, that's going to be a base hit. And that is speed on the base pass. Cardinals lead the league in stolen bases. I mean, they've got some speed. You see it here, not even, not even with their stealing bases, but staying out of double plays. They got about five guys in their lineup. They can move. You kind of expect that over the years for the Cardinals. They've always believed in speed. Here's Fowler. And a strike. Melanson in the O one to Fowler. So I'm going to foul. It's nothing in two. It's Crawford playing to the right of second. Outfield straight away. Just need to keep it at a three run deficit. They got nine more outs in this game. Side one and two. 
1.22 on load time, which is good on load time. Out of the stretch for Melanson. One point two two will give Buster Posey a shot at anybody. Ooh. Two and two. That's one Lansing wanted. Buster's getting a little frustrated not getting that low pitch. Take a look at the cutter right at the base. Marquez not giving it. And I think that's the part of the strike zone that's been most stingy tonight. And it's at the bottom of the strike zone. And a swing and a foul to our left in the club level. So you got to raise it up. This is the view from where the riders are. They're one level below us. It's a great level. That is a great level. Ours is better. <laughs> Don't tell the riders. In the dirt. Also keeps it out in front. If we're in Pittsburgh or Washington. We'd be on the roof. Atlanta. Atlanta is very nice. Haven't seen that one. So three and two with speed. So you would think O'Neill is going to go. He does. And it's driven into triples alley. Dickerson on the move still on the move it's off to bricks and it caroms to Pilar O'Neill scores easily panic's got a shot and they got him no they're going to say Fowler hit the bag before Longoria tagged him I think his arm may have got in there before the tag guys are definitely going to review it it was a strike from panic they even gave him a chance. Yeah he has touched him on the chest but the left arm is in. So you go back to that one pitch that you didn't get and now Fowler gets a second life and he takes advantage of it. So it's 7 3 with nobody out and Weeders at the plate with Fowler at third. Derek Hogg getting loose again. That's his third hump down in the Giants pen. Well, you get up that many times, eventually you're going to get into the game. Yeah, Bruce Bochy does not like to get a guy up three times it's because that's a lot of throws before you get the game. Stuff can get a bit diluted when you've been up three times getting ready. Because when you get the call to get ready, it's it's go. It's establish that fastball and, and start pumping. So this will be a double switch. It looks like Donovan's Solano's coming in. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune-up in smog experts. We'll be back. Uh, Seve in favor of the Cardinals. So it's Dutch Holland. He's now on the hill. Numbers for Derek Holland. 26 game he's come into. Just about out of the sixes as he's continued to whittle down the ERA for pitch pitcher. 
and he has inherited a strikeout situation. And he almost hit Weeders. And it's one ball and no strikes. In tight, two and zero. Oh. Giants play the infield all the way in. Solano, Crawford up the middle. Pretty easy takes right there for Weeders. I'm gonna say if I didn't know, but it looked like Holland's throwing at him. But we know better. We do know better. They could be best of friends for all we know. And the strike. It's three and one. Meant to be easy tonight. Well, you just haven't seen the Giants get bit by the the walk bug in a long time, and tonight they've given up six. Six free passes is never a good thing. Now the Giants will face the lefty Colton Wong. Again, infield will play in. Panic or make that off of Solano's glove into left field. Fowler will come in to score. It's the third hit of the inning. And it's eight to three. Well, when you're drawn in at the halfway. Defensive set as a middle infielder, you get a ball hit like that, I and mean, you're just kind of do or die. You don't have a lot of range. Take a look at where this ball was hit. Exploded on a one hop top spin. And the high backhander could not gather it in, just hit him on a little finger of the glove. Base hit all the way. Here's Bader batting for the first time. Another guy with really good speed. Bader might be the fastest of all of them. Yeah, and th this has been a really disappointing season for him. I mean, they, he was their everyday center fielder. Ran around last year like it was going to be easy for him. Fouled on the right field line and out of play. Well, he had 264, 12 homers and 37 RBIs, 15 stolen bases, caught three times. I mean, he was a plus offensively, but what he did with the glove is what was remarkable. I mean, his range was tremendous. Two and two. So the league adjusts to you. That's your responsibility. Adjust back. It happens to almost all of us. Yeah, there are rare exceptions to that rule.
Three and two. On the ground to Solano to Crawford to Sandoval double play. Weeders moves to third. And not even Bader could outrun the arm of Brandon Crawford right there. Edmund one for three. And a strike. Yeah, Edmund, he had the sway of the bat that gave the Cardinals a lead in the fourth, and they haven't given it up. Holland with a good pitch, 0 and 2. Yeah, I guess he did. Best seat in the house. Two and two on the pitch in tight. Oh yeah. Extra whipped cream. Ooh. Oh, that's an odd couple. Aren't those rivals? Well, they are. It's Joe Madden's twin brother. Two two pitch. Here it is. Mustard knocks it down. It's three and two. Save a run. Even with Weeders. Six foot five inch catchers. They don't have great speed. But that ball bounced about three feet in front of home plate. You're just trying to get a piece of it. And we'll see that dropped out there. It froze Weeders. Pop up. Dickerson will chase, Jeff but it's going to be out of play. <laughs> all I'm, care, all I'm, I'm concerned about is Dickerson watching over, what, running over there, and being aware of where the mound is. Well, I think he urged it. And another 3 2 pitch. Got him. Two runs here in the seventh. It's 8 3. Baseball and NBC Sports Bay Area is brought to you by Toyota. A fast, powerful lineup that will make sure you're safe at home. See your local Toyota dealer today. Toyota, let's go places. By Southwest Airlines. Low fares. Nothing to hide. That's transparency. By Provident Credit Union Super Reward Checking. We pay you. And by Xfinity. X1 will change the way you experience TV. Here at uh, Oracle Park, it's an 8 3 lead for the Cardinals. And for the Giants, it'll be. Donovan Solano to lead things off. So Solano who came in on the double switch. And he takes low one ball and no strikes. 
That is an acute angle on that slider. You, you look at a guy and you see the number of strikeouts that he brings into the ball game. As Gallegos has 57 strikeouts, and 38 two thirds. That's prior to tonight's ball game. You say, well, how's he doing it? Look at his velocity. It's it's good. It's, it's a low to mid 90s. It's got to change if he doesn't throw a whole lot of. Well, it's got to be the slider. And if you look at the high over the top release that he has the arm slot I mean, it's really up there and you see the break on the slider it is straight down and it's high velocity and that's your swing in this pitch two and one to Solano that thing too it's great about a high release is you get tilt you release that thing high and you throw a knee high strike you're going to get tilt Out of play down the right field line. And a lot of hitting coaches believe that if you have a high release like Gallegos has, he throws a knee high strike, that hitter is going to see a quarter of the ball. Whereas if he throws it high across the letter, you're going to see half the ball. And that's the advantage of the high release. You don't see it. Out of play, it stays at two and two. But when you have a kill slider like he's got, you understand the strikeout totals. Gallegos from Sonora, Mexico. The 2 2. Another foul down the right field line and out of play. Belt to follow. Hit into center field on a line to Bader, who reaches up and he makes the catch. Well, you don't have to scroll through today's news feed. Watch Synced In on Instagram, hosted by NBC Barrios Abby Fernandez. Find NBC Barrios on Instagram. Here's Belt. Belt 0 for 2. Out of play. 0 oh and 2. High to belt 1 and 2. Talked about the game tomorrow at 7. Madison Bumgarner on the hill. His last start of the first half. Outside for a ball. It's been a pretty revealing first half. If you look at what has happened around baseball, and the big story has been the baseball. Home run totals around the game. Guys are going to have some monster years this year. A lot of them. Belt out of play. Miles Michaelus is going to be on the hill. Belt out swinging. Strike three with the fastball. 
First strikeout tonight for Gallegos. Here's Buster. Buster two for two. And then he had a line drive right back at Dakota Hudson who speared it before it got to the outfield. That was a good bat. Ball on one strike. Right now, just trying to get on for Sandoval and then Dickerson and Longoria. Side as he tried to backdoor that two seed movement. She is out of here. The graduate? Yeah. Three and two to Buster Posey. I, I think that's the ultimate compliment to your partner. She wore that to her graduation and she brought it to the game. Lit up. Well, aren't you supposed to be when you graduate? Lit up. 3 2 pitch to Buster Posey. Out of play. Giants need. Base runner, another one, then a blast to get back into this one. Get everybody. More interested. Here's the three two. Hit to left. But O'Neill is going to put it away. That was a one cheek fly ball to left as we'll head to the eighth. Here at Oracle Park, it is Ask ABG segment. Tonight's question coming from Dave Bernstein. He would like to know which non Bay Area athlete the Giants players follow closely. So, Dave, I got you a couple of answers. Sam Dyson, he's really in to the Women's World Cup, aren't we all? And he's become a big fan of Alex Morgan, as we all have, of course. Evan Longoria, he said he is super into golf, and he said he knows that Tiger Woods, he can be a polarizing figure, but if he is golfing, he has to watch Tiger Woods. And Brandon Belt, he couldn't pick a current player he said he follows the Cowboys religiously favorite player Michael Irvin if you have a question for a Giants player or coach tweet it to me ask at Amy G Giants hashtag it ask Amy G gentlemen all right good stuff is Ron Hell Ravello is the pinch hitter Ravello is one for six. He's having a solid season down in Memphis, their triple A affiliate. Got him. Not so much here. Not so much here. Set up an inside corner and just explode the glove at 93. Here's DeYoung. Padres end up beating the Dodgers three to two. That was. Lauer against Kershaw. I believe both ended up with no decisions. I should, think you're right. Should check that before I actually say anything. I think that was the case.
Hit down the left field line. Foul. Yes, yeah, Stammen the winner, Garcia the loser. Yates is 28th save. That the other guy's had a great half. Yates lead the world in saves. Got him. Working that inside corner tonight. Just stroking it. Mr. Allen. And Posey, I mean, he's over there. He set a, a, a target on that inside corner. I mean, it's almost completely out of the strike zone. Not moving his glove right between the knees. Marquez says, yeah, it looks pretty good from here. Here's Goldschmidt. Nothing down there. All night long. Pomeranz was frustrated, frustrated by it. Gott was frustrated by it. Melanson was frustrated by it. Pilar will put that pop up away to end the inning. <laughs> yeah, it's a pop up. 8 3. Cardinals are leading. Well, what place is there to celebrate our nation's birthday? Then the World Center of Racing. It's the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series from Historic Daytona tomorrow afternoon at 4.30 on NBC. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service. Your trusted oil change tune-up and smog experts. Dominic Leone, the new pitcher now for the Cardinals. Got a good fastball, mid to high 90s, curveball slider changeup. Spent some time in his career as a starter. He's got the four basic pitches. Hard thrower. Sandoval 0 for 2. He drew a walk in the first. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Just outside with that fastball at 94. One ball and two strikes. Dickerson on deck. Looks like we're the only game in town. I think we are the only game left. Two and two on the pitch in the dirt. Had a couple late ones back east. You know, Atlanta was playing well into the morning the wee hours because of a long rain delay. Popped up. And it's going to be O'Neill who comes in and makes the catch. All right, time now for our Jeep drive of the game. Let me go back to the third inning when Alex Dickerson stepped up and did this against Dakota Hudson. Hit a bullet 112.9 miles an hour. Solo shot. That was his fourth of the year. That was our Jeep drive of the game. Also singled in the fifth with a line drive to left field. And here he takes a breaking ball inside, one ball and no strikes. Pulls this one foul. All right, 30th MLB Stadium. First stadium visit was St. Louis in 1940 something. And then tonight was their 30th. Whoa. What really? took you so long? 
<laughs> you think candlestick is included in that? Well, I, I'd like to think so. Two great Cardinals, Albert Pujols, Stan the Man Musial. So they have to be from St. Louis, and they had to be in a game when they were babies. A high fastball, two outs. Do you think if our camera guy stood there that they would hold that up all night? Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> Cardinal fans, they've got good attitude. They'll hang in there. Samer, I'll give you 200 bucks if you stay there until 3 in the morning. <laughs> Gamers. Here's Pilar. The pitch is down low. God bless him. Is, uh, is Stammer still got him? <laughs> yep. Still got him. <laughs> One ball and no strikes. Oh, my goodness. I love those people. You know why? <laughs> they love the game we love. Yes, they do. Yep, hold it up. Sammer, she's going to start throwing rocks at you. <laughs> no, we didn't get it yet. <laughs> Sammer, tell them we're in commercial. <laughs> uh. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Pilar, and it's outside and high. Two balls and one strike. All right. We can release them. Sammer, release them. Oh, I feel better. <laughs> and a pop up. It's going to be Colton Wong. And that'll end the inning. There's Stammer. Did they get back up? Oh, they did. Gamers. Out of way. <laughs> A3 Cardinals, right? The new pitcher now for Bruce Pochi. Ray Black. Who was recalled from Sacramento on Wednesday going to have his season debut. That's what he did with the River Cats down in Sacramento. Want to know with a 5 2 1 ERA. In those 19 appearances, he pitched 19 innings. He struck out 28 hitters. He's got a good fastball. It's a high 90s fastball, big curveball, occasional cutter. Facing O'Neill. Out of play. By the way, you were talking about that game in Atlanta. Yeah. The, the Braves scored in the ninth to win one nothing. See how long that rain delay was. I'm gonna look right now. Swinging a ground ball foul. Two hours and 28 minutes. Wow, that's too much. It's too much to have to sit in John Holland's clubhouse. You know you're going to pay for that. I, I love John. Yes, we do. Got him with a fastball at a hundred. Let's take a look. A hundred mile an hour fastball, just exploding right by a good fastball hitter. Not this time. Here's Fowler. So you're in the on deck circle, and the guy just registers 100 to punch out the guy before you. What do you think? And well, in there? you know what I would do just to, to make things interesting is I would let the pitcher know that I'm moving up in the box just to see what. You're doing. <laughs> Yeah, I got your honey I mean, right here, pal. I mean, just to show that well, I'm not that impressed. I'm going to move up a couple of steps in the box. And then I would slowly creep to the very last <laughs> spot in the box. But then you have to know that the guy out there has to have a sense of humor. And if he doesn't, then you're in trouble. 
Hit to right. Deep. Gone. Fowler with his 10th of the year. We already got a breaking ball. Yeah, that, the guy that throws 100 is always going to say, why did I throw a breaking ball? That's exactly what he's going to say. And I think the manager is going to say the same thing. It's a good pitch to hit. 75% of a swing for Fowler, just nice and easy. Sweet spot, see ya. Here's Matt Weeders. Weeders fouls it out of play. He's had a couple of hits tonight. Hey, the Cardinals got 13. Out of play. That's an impressive swing of the bat from Fowler's perspective. Yeah, it is. You know, you, you see a guy throwing 100, you're not thinking about the slider. No. This one will be playable for Longoria. Two outs. So here's Colton Wong, who's got two hits. There's Willie McGee, one of our all time favorite. Hard to like Willie McGee, such a bad guy. Yeah. Oh, is there a nicer guy in the game? No. no. I mean, he looks like a nice guy. But he gets to sleep in his own bed. Yeah, he lives in Hercules. Bay Area guy. That's, you know, you look around to see the Bay Area athletes that got away from the local teams, and he's one of them. He's one of them. He was with the Giants back in the early 90s. It was our pleasure. Look out. Uh, let's take a look at the stat cast. It at 94.7. 357 feet. I mean, those are the fly balls that make you, they remind you that it's a short portion, right? Right. You just don't see a lot of them. Here's Bader who takes high. I thought that 93 defense the Giants had in 103 games, but their defense was, it was unbelievable. And McGee played right field, Darren Lewis in center, Bonds in, in left. That outfield was incredible what they, what they did. Will Clark and Robbie Thompson, Royce Clayton, Matt Williams, Kurt Manwaring. A lot of gold gloves in that field. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. A couple of pitchers too. Bill Swift, Johnny Burkett, two 20 game winners. And Rod Beck. Go get him. 235 pounds of heart. Fred McGriff screwed that year up. Yeah, he did. When he got traded over to the Braves. That was it. Giants won 103, Braves won 104, and the Giants didn't go to the playoffs. Bader strikes out looking, so the home run by Fowler gives the Cardinals another run. It's 9-3 as we go to the bottom of the net.
A lot tonight for the Cardinals. It started early. And uh, they didn't stop. They keep kept adding on and they lead in this one. By a score of nine to three. For the Giants it'll be Crawford to lead things off. Against Leon. Crawford 0 for 2. He did draw a walk in the first inning and it knocked in a run. Here's the pitch to Brandon Crawford and it's outside and high. One ball and no strikes. Pilar to follow. And that pitch is outside. It's two and zero. Crawford drives one right center field. It's off the bottom of the wall and Crawford's got a leadoff double. Oh, that, was, that was the sound you're looking for. So it's Brandon a, Crawford opens up. Pitch up right at the belt at 94. Oh, and you looked at the reaction from Leone. I mean he knew it right away. It's a matter of whether or not he's going to go out about a third of the way up. So he has to settle for a double, but that felt good. Pilar is one for three. That's the first hit for the Giants since Dickerson singled in the fifth. First base runner since Dickerson singled in the fifth. Guys, this one that's going to be in the seats out of play. That ball that Crawford hit off the wall it would have been a home run in 28 of the 30 ballparks in the big league level. Obviously, this one here and the other one, Comerica Park. That's kind of a bummer. Maybe next year. Two and one. Maybe next year. Maybe. Two and two on the fastball in. This guy's gamer, he's ready. He's not leaving. He's got his double flapper going. He's got the glove that he paid for when he was a kid with his paper out. On the ground. Young will throw him out. Crawford moves to third. And here's vote. I do believe, though, Mike, we say it all the time when we show the kids. Uh, they'll be asleep by the Bay Bridge. I think mom's going to be driving. He's going to be asleep by the Bay Bridge. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of good attitude in that orange jacket. It is. You use up all those mound visits. Yeah, I was just checking to see. You can't. You, you can't leave them out there. You got to use them up. You get penalized if you don't use them. Yeah, you lose them. 
It's like early cell phone minutes. <laughs> yeah, remember that? You have to worry about how long you're talking on the phone. Yeah. And you worry about one of your kids is eating up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was always the same kid, too. Yeah. It's vote, and vote rolls it foul. Got somebody down in the end of the dugout. Vote hitting 260. And a bit outside with Crawford at third. Overshift is on. Wong in shallow right field. Out of play. One and two. He was looking for that fastball up, trying to get that fly ball deep enough. You could actually, not now, but prior to that, you could bunch your way on and pick up a hit in an RBI. Yeah. Not now. No, not with two strikes. This guy's scouting. Pac 12 guy. Good take. It's two and two. I think we saw Bill Lee's old roommate. It might have been. High to left field with Crawford tagging. O'Neill catching. This throw is going to be late. And vote with a sacrifice fly. It's an RBI. Here's Solano. Solano lined out to center field in the seventh inning. And uh, he's going to bloop one that Bader's going to catch. And that's the ball game. So the Giants, they come home after a terrific road trip to San Diego, and uh, they found themselves trailing 3 0 after the first half inning. And that's just kind of set the stage for what the Cardinals did the whole game. Well, they added on, and I think that uh, that really was the difference in the ball game. And uh, not the cleanest of outings for Drew Pomeranz. It's a little bit of a setback for him because he had been pitching some beautiful baseball, especially in this ballpark. But you tip your cap to the Cardinals because they outgrinded tonight. All right, final score here at Oracle Park. It's the Cardinals nine and the Giants four. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. Giants postgame live presented by Toyota starts right now.